Welcome, welcome to One Minute Crypto. I'm your host, Kronos, and today I want to talk about the attack that the original designer of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, protected against by adding a maximum block size limit to the code. Let me rewind a bit and give you a little background here. Back in 2009, when Bitcoin came out, there was no hard-coded maximum block size limit. But in 2010, a year later, Satoshi Nakamoto slipped one in. As the anonymous creator of Bitcoin, he said, I need to protect against this denial of service attack and put this in the code. Now, the attack is actually Actually very interesting because when people hear denial of service or DOS, they usually think distributed denial of service or DDoS attack, which is basically a whole bunch of machines requesting information at the same time, shutting down the source. However, this denial of service attack is a little bit different. It's where a miner, instead of making a normal block, makes an enormous block added to the blockchain, like a gigabyte or 10 gigabytes, and sends that out to the other miners. Well, without this hard-coded limit, the other miners would automatically accept that block and start processing the transactions inside of it. Of course, because it's so large, it could grind their operations to a halt, allowing the attacker to continue mining and reap the benefits from the blockchain. So that was the attack Satoshi wanted to defend against, and it was successful. Nobody ever attacked the blockchain that way. But the limit actually allowed a different denial of service attack that Satoshi didn't see coming. And that's because he didn't think that the transaction volume, the throughput of all transactions on the network, would get close to that limit. He actually wrote that if we ever got close to the limit, we could just increase it in order to allow the transactions to flow smoothly. But instead, that limit wasn't increased, and blocks started getting to their maximum size. The blocks were full, transactions started getting clogged up. And then a different denial of service attack became possible, which is if you put transactions into the blockchain with a very high fee, you're crowding out the other users of the blockchain. And so that actually creates an incentive for miners to put their own spam transactions into the blockchain. The other miners then are also incentivized to do the same thing, add their own spam to the blockchain, and then they are clogging up the chain and causing high fees for everyone. The net result is that all the miners get more in fees from the general user base, but fewer people get their transactions processed. Effectively, everybody's block size is smaller because of those spam transactions. Without a block size limit, those spam transactions could be accepted and processed with everyone else, so there'd be no effect. But with one, it effectively decreases the access to the blockchain for the average people trying to use Bitcoin. And we've actually seen this happen over the last year or so. There have been times where the blockchain has actually been slowed down. You can see the transactions are clearly spam because there's one address paying 200 different addresses, all the same amount of Bitcoins, just like a spray of transactions that are simply meant to clog up the blockchain. Now, it's not clear who's sending them, whether it's miners because they're going to make more fees or whether it's attackers trying to make Bitcoin less useful for everybody else. But that attack was actually made possible by the block size limit, which is an interesting side effect of Satoshi's change. So understanding this background kind of gives us a little more perspective on the block size limit debate. I hope this was useful to you. If you have any thoughts on this, be sure to let me know. Post in the comments below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.